my question. I did not hear your question. So assume that an abortion means the death of a fetus. Is there a cutoff that you would agree with in that situation? Uh, well, there, there's no such thing as a late-term abortion. It's not a medically accepted term. It would be a termination later in pregnancy. And in the case that it does result in the death of the fetus, it would only be due to uh, fetal abnormalities where they could not survive birth. Okay. All right. I guess I don't find that totally unreasonable. Great. What else? What else can we debate about? Whatever you would like. I have a whole list. Uh, the biggest threat to the U.S. is white Christian nationalism. Yes. Um, I would say the biggest threat to the U.S. is the destruction of democracy, but maybe that's coming from the same place. Sure. Well, what can we argue about? We can argue about something, I'm sure. Well, I, I have a list. I mean, if there's no, if you agree with everything, then I mean, I don't know. Is that your whole like, arbitrary... list of life positions? You don't have any positions that aren't on this list? I usually don't debate topics, just random topics, because I do like to have a pretty good grasp on my opinion before I do. Okay, I see. So these well, are topics the that i All right. Yep, I'm working on it here. You can get back to doing your hair some more if you need to. That's supposed to be condescending. No, just confrontational. I'm trying to pick a fight. I don't really mean anything by mm -hmm. it. I'm just trying to. Just so, so you suffer from purposes. toxic. You suffer from toxic masculinity. Maybe you can tell me what that's like. Um, sure. Yeah, we'll go with that one. Toxic man masculinity. How do you define that? Uh, so the four traits of toxic masculinity are stoicism, competitiveness, aggression, and dominance. So basically anything that I do that is perceived to be confrontational, me being a man, would be to toxic masculinity. I classified what you did as aggressive. Hmm. Well. What else do we have here? Anti-purity culture. What do you mean by anti-purity culture? Uh, so purity culture is the idea that uh, you are either pure or impure based on your sexual prowess or history. And I reject the notion okay. that people you're having sex if you're relates to them pure being pure. And if not, you're not pure. pure. Correct. Or that if you have lots of sex, you are impure or dirty. No, I should say lots fair. of partners. What, uh, okay, sex, health, ed education, and kindergarten, what would you define as being appropriate at that point? Uh, so in kindergarten, it would be family circles, friend circles, anatomical name of body parts, uh, what is good touch, bad touch, confusing touch, necessary touch. Uh, I think those are the... Foundations. That seems reasonable. I'm having a hard time fighting with you, actually, despite my toxic masculinity. Um, Gosh darn it. No exception for SA. What does the SA stand for? Sexual assault. Sexual assault. Okay. Rape culture, rape culture, what do you mean by that pertaining to abortion? So if someone does not give an exception for someone to have an abortion due to rape or incest, then they are promoting mm -hmm. rape culture. Okay. So what, um, in light of the current uh, political situation, what would you say should or should not be done at this point in terms of what 
Uh, just the Supreme Court decision that's probably coming out and the more restrictive laws in a number of states. What do you think is the best solution to combat that? Uh, essentially, it would be a, a long term game. I don't think there's really much we can do in the short term. Uh, we would have to really have a plan that has effects uh, that continue to ripple throughout time, uh, which would be through uh, voting activism as as well as uh, choosing where to spend our money. So common power to the people. So the problem that I, I guess, OK, if I was to pick a fight with you, it would be on this. Um, Hooray. Saying things like, you know, no restriction whatsoever to abortion, I think makes it uh, a little bit more difficult to achieve what you're wanting to achieve in the long term. I think that is what riles up the right and uh, and makes it more difficult to kind of make these, you know, probably more modest, more incremental changes that are likely um, taking you know, I think a lot of people would see that legal without restriction. I think a lot of people would see that as being a pretty extreme position. Well, I think they lack education. And I don't know why I have to compromise with someone who is uneducated. And I understand like, that. I, 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 I don't purposes. see a reason of trying to reach across the aisle. If, if, they, if we don't agree, fine, they can fuck off. Well, except there are not enough votes or enough support on your particular position there to achieve what you want to do. You're going to have to, you know, you're we have actually to kind do. Of... If we get the millennial and Gen Z vote, I mean, really, all you need is the millennial vote. And millennials are much more progressive than Gen Xers and boomers. So as time starts to go on, if we get the young vote and a silent generation and boomers start to die, we will have a dramatic shift. Yeah, but you're talking about. 20, 30 years before you get to that point based on the makeup of the Supreme Court right now? No. Well, may maybe in terms of the Supreme Court, but, uh, you know, Congress can still, as well as the Senate, can try to codify Roe v. Wade into, into law. And I know they already tried, but obviously we need a more progressive government, which I think the only way would be to vote more progressive candidates in, which only the younger generation is going to do. Yeah, I just, uh, again, I don't see that happening for 20 to 30 years. Why not pick a more moderate position that could get support across from the across the aisle and get closer because to what you're wanting? drastic times call for drastic measures. I think that's kind of the whole problem right now, though, the, that whole mindset that, you know, both sides think these are drastic times and both sides are trying to implement drastic measures. And what we're left with is the extreme from one side or the other. And the middle. What's is the extreme kind of left? Right now. What's the extreme left? Well, I don't want to say that the extreme left is the same as the extreme right. But the extreme left in terms of abortion would probably be your position legal without restriction. I don't know how much further to the left you can get aside from like man mandating abortions. I, I don't know why saying there shouldn't be any laws regarding a health care procedure you have take such issue with. Like, it's I not an extreme position, and I don't I'm appreciate you labeling it as such. Well, OK, tell me a position that would be further to the left of yours. Pro-abortion. That if you don't meet certain requirements, you have to have an abortion. So, yeah. So but that actually might abortions. go really far right, which would I think would be more fascist rather. It, it could. You're right. It could go in either direction at that point. But, yeah, I mean, mandata mandating abortion would be the only thing that is more extreme than the position that you're listing there. And again, I'm my not position is not extreme. Wrong. Are you upset that there are no laws regarding heart surgery? No, but how do you equate that to what we're right. talking about? It's a medical procedure. Okay. But who is advocating against heart surgery? No one. Why? Right. 
So I'm, I guess I'm coming at this from like a political standpoint, like what is achievable, what can be done. And I'm just saying on one end of the spectrum, I think is your position. And the other end is the position saying that abortion could be, should be completely illegal with no exceptions. And right now, right, but they really can't getting... like, I, I agree. And that is because of a very far right movement that is based in white Christian nationalism and upholding white supremacy. Right? Oh, that fits this. We don't. We're oh, I really view the far right to... is, is equal. They're, they're just gearing up. Okay. But just from a practical political standpoint, I am practical. The far right right now is much closer to achieving their goals than you are to achieving yours. Oh, you're absolutely right. Wouldn't you be happier somewhere, you know, with some sort of a compromise? No, I'd rather shove my middle finger in their fucking face. Well, but while you're doing that, they are going to be completely I love how you're a man telling me how I should approach an issue regarding women's rights. No, I'm a human being telling you that your position is not politically practical at this point. And would not it be better based to on what? land somewhere? Excuse me? Based on what? What based the other the party's opinion of my the... opinion is? No, I'm just saying that just based on the political realities, your position is not in a place where it's going to succeed right now. And wouldn't it be better to come find some compromise somewhere? I, in the I middle, do think it, it will succeed. We cut off. It What's was that? already. It was the Roe v. Wade was a 24 week cutoff. So we already did the negotiation. And guess what? That wasn't good enough. At this point right now, the most practical, based on where the Supreme Court is, I'm looking at this from like a judicial standpoint, the most practical, realistic compromise would be a 15-week cutoff. And you are, I assume, not at all okay with that. No, there, there's no benefit to people who are not in medicine deciding and legislating these kind of decisions. I see abortion bills that come through from all different states, and it is so clear to me that these whites from the situation. Do you know why abortion was made illegal in 1867? No, I don't. Because women were starting to gain political power, and the most common abortion patient was a white married Protestant woman. We also had, the, uh, had, had a huge migra migration so we had minorities migrating to America. And the most common person to receive an abortion was, a, was white people. So they made abortion illegal. Number one, to maternalize women, send them back to the home so that they wouldn't be involved in politics, and to make more white babies, to uphold white supremacy. So I, it's, it's the same playbook to me. Why would I want to compromise with that? Why would I want to compromise with a system that is trying to oppress women? Because the lack of compromise is going to end up in the complete opposite of what you want. It already is. It already was compromised. We already had a 24-week constitutional right, and that wasn't good enough for him. So don't tell me that I need to draw the line back to appease what cisgendered white men. Get a fucking grip. So if somebody were to come to you with the deal that said, hey, look. We will agree to a 15 week cutoff or you can just walk away and then it will go to a complete ban on abortion. Would you walk away from that? Why would I let them just dictate all terms? Why would I do that? Why would I submit to their rules? I mean, I, I understand not wanting to, but, you know, when you're... You, you already said I shouldn't negotiate with Nazis. Like, at what point should I stop negotiating? I don't know. I guess you're going to... 
kind of digging your heels where you are. And I, I understand that I do. I'm not, Good. you know, I'm not disrespecting you for taking that position. I'm just saying that is not what the reality is right now. There's I don't not... care. I will not, not be pushed down. So if I told you that by I will push back for your if I told you that by advocating for your position exclusively, what it would result in is a complete ban on abortion. You would continue to advocate for your position rather 100. than seeking some sort of a compromise. If they wanted a compromise, I would have conditions, but I would not agree to a 15 week unless they gave me my pretty extreme conditions on the other side. What would your conditions be? Where to start? Uh, comprehensive sex education K through twelve, public funding mm -hmm. of IUDs and long asked long acting reversible contraceptives, uh, mm -hmm. access to healthcare within no more of ten miles of each individual, so that they can receive abortion access. Uh, no regulation of the abortion pill or no prescription required. Uh, paid living wage and paid maternity and paternity leave. So I don't necessarily think that any of those are extreme positions. Well, those and would be I actually things that, that reduce abortion. Well, no, and I, I wish that the conversation that we were having was not how to prevent abortion, but how to prevent unplanned pregnancies. Well, that, you know, like if, if you want to talk about ways goal, to reduce unwanted pregnancy an... or to give 47% of people who have an abortion want to parent the child. They either don't have the means to do so, they don't have the uh, support system in order to care for the child, or they're in a situation of domestic violence. So I would like to give people options so that they can prevent unwanted pregnancy and have control over their reproductive health, as well as mm -hmm. give people a second option so that they don't feel abortion is their only option. So everything that I laid out to you is actual pragmatic policy that would reduce abortion. Abortion no, I don't, I, do and I don't disagree with that at all. Abortion bans are designed only to oppress and subjugate women. Yeah, no, and I, I agree with most everything that you're saying. My, I guess, you know, my, my, only, my only point is just kind of coming at it from like a pragmatic and political standpoint. I just don't. Mine is pragmatic. I, Mine is practical. I don't need to negotiate with people who have no fucking idea what they're talking about. These men in government do not have an idea on what they are talking about. They do not understand the fundamentals of pregnancy. They do not understand their own constituents and the struggle it is to receive health care. Most people have abortions later in pregnancy because it's an out-of-pocket expense and they have to travel for services. So if we increased services, people would have abortions sooner rather than later, which I'm sure we can all agree, having abortions later in pregnancy makes people feel uncomfortable. And we think the sooner someone can get an abortion, the better. So yes, my policies are very pragmatic. From a practical point of view, yes, I would say pretty much everything that you've said is pragmatic, but... Isn't that what pragmatic means? Is practical? What's that? Isn't that what pragmatic means? Is practical? I mean, again, I'm just coming from it, uh, coming to it from a political standpoint. And I just. I guess Would I you just say you're wonder... a feminist? Well, define that. Feminism? Yeah, define what it would mean for me to be a male feminist. Equality between both genders. Sure, yes. Great. So do you think that I have different barriers a woman in society than you as a man in society? Of course. 
So do you think that maybe I understand those barriers and those prejudice, prejudices more than you? From your perspective, from the things that affect you, absolutely. Great. So do you think it would be better for you pragmatically to listen to me on how I would like my own prejudice and barriers addressed rather than telling me what I should do? If it was just up to me, absolutely. But there are 330 million other people in the country who are making these decisions. It's not just me. If it was, and there's I would not probably say, yeah. people making these decisions. What's that? There's not 330 million other people making these decisions. Like I, I don't, I don't go around telling black people how to address systemic racism. That's my okay, point. but but the three hundred and thirty million people do. Deciding how these things are decided. Well, no, I mean you got to take into effect like how many are kids, and okay. then how many so you know are actually a voting age, people. and then in terms of you know when it comes to actually electing leaders in. There's a lot that needs to be changed with the system, but no, like I'm, I'm done. Like I, I don't, you, you can submit your case all enough. That might be in my best interest to negotiate. No, I disagree. Okay. Well, I mean, like I said, I get that. I just, um, I just don't know that I see you achieving any of your goals with a hardline stance. Well, I'm, I'm going to push back pretty hard. So maybe they'll end up giving me what I want. Well, you're going to need a couple hundred million more people aside from yourself. So that's probably well, where the focus that's should great. be. Yep, definitely imploring young people to get involved in voting and activism because I think that is the only thing that's going to fix it. The older generations have been at the levers of power for too long. All right. Well, I wish you luck. Thank you. I appreciate that. You enjoy the rest of your evening. You too. Thanks. Bye. The audacity. <laughs> can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Um, let's rewind just a minute for Mr. The Stupid Rightfully Named um philosopher i it seems he's unaware of how women have gotten our rights initially because when you look back at the feminist waves the first waves of feminism with people like elizabeth caddy stanton they took that approach of being polite they dressed the way that would in a way that would appeal to the men in power they behaved in a way that would appeal to the men in power things on end for decades with no success. It wasn't until people like Lucy Burns and Alice Paul came out with their bricks through windows and their massive sheets drawn down the drawn down the uh, balcony in the Supreme Court or not Supreme Court in the in the cap in the what am I saying in the Capitol, I think it was. It wasn't until they were like out picketing every single day and quoting the president in in essentially saying like you can't fight for democracy abroad and not even have it here. Like it wasn't until the women got violent and mad that actual change happened. Like this whole approach it in a way that is going to appease them is absolute bull. Yes. Thank you. And I'm sorry, who, who did you say that first woman was that like was all polite and dressed nice? So Elizabeth Caddy Stanton, and it's I think it's Caddy C A D D Y Elizabeth Caddy Stanton, and there's another really Wendy. famous one that I forgot her name. Um, but yeah, she and the other she, she and like her wave of feminists feminists were very much polite, and they did it the way, and and they were getting angry and upset about it, but they actually rejected people who became more violent um, and more aggressive in the cause because they thought that it would 
hinder the cause, that it would contribute to the hysteria claim. Shouldn't be um, able to have a voice in 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 government or in. Um, and that's not how it went. It wasn't until people got real pissed. And we see that like all over, right? Like people think yeah, people like want to yeah. calm police. Yeah, they want to calm everyone down when it gets to such dire, desperate points. Like, let us get pissed off. Yes. I will shove my manicured middle finger in your face yeah <laughs> yeah have you have you watched the movie iron jawed angels with hillary swank i have i actually uh watched that my senior year of high school and i wrote a paper in my government class because uh, the topic is what makes a good u.s citizen and mm. i wrote about the uh, u.s hockey team in 1980 and mm -hmm. Elizabeth Paul. Nice. Or Alice Paul. Alice Paul. Yeah, I was gonna say I'm guessing Alice Paul. Yeah. <laughs> that movie, like I I I had to watch that in my social welfare policy class in college. Um and I typically avoid movies like that because they're pretty triggering for me. But it was very eye opening and educational and I did a lot of research as to the accuracy of that movie and it is very historically accurate like it's very, a great movie yeah it's brilliant if anyone wants to know I like really feel sucked in about how we actually got recommend iron jawed angels i need to watch it again i wonder if it's on hbo because i'm pretty sure that was yeah. an hbo movie i definitely bought the dvd when dvds were a thing <laughs> I know. I'm like, mm -hmm. <laughs> like, oh, I watched that in high school. I just dated myself. There's somebody in the comments that might, I don't know if they have, let me see if they have enough followers. JCBKR12 who's kind of thrown down. Oh, some yeah. Just, just talking mad shit. He can, <laughs> all the men chirp in the comments. It's, it is interesting to me because you know what really pisses off men, it seems, is when women have a voice, it's upsetting. But when we tell them that they don't have a voice in this fight, that really, really upsets them. They've lived with that privilege for so long of being valid in every conversation they enter. I know, right? That's why I like try to call them on it, being like, are you really telling me how I should fight mm -hmm. my own battle? Yeah. Well, and he was trying hard to find something to argue with you on, but even that process in and of itself was a bit condescending. Yeah. Goodness. He, he left with an L. <laughs> Somebody sent you a crown. Oh, you're so sweet. Thank you, guys. You got some I think he's still viewers. in here. I think so too. My screen, I think there might be glitching because my screen still shows him on there and not me. So, um, but yeah, I'm going to go and get my kids ready for bed, but thanks for letting me come on. I just wanted to make sure people knew that that would be a very failed way to approach this fight. That's what we've been doing for fun. No, of course. Always love, love having you on here. Are you in my discord yet? I feel like I sent um, you the invite, didn't I? Yeah, I'm in it through my other account because I have the Discord through my other account, but I don't want to correlate the two accounts too much just because my kids are in that other account, you know, and this is a more volatile sure. sphere. So I'm going to create another no, Discord I get it. with written uh, with this account and then I'll join through that one. Okay. Yeah, that's what I got to do. So awesome. Sounds good. Thank You're you so awesome, much, all. Kenzie. Yeah, we'll talk to you soon. You are awesome. Always appreciate having you. <laughs> Thanks, you too. Thank you guys. You're so sweet. Yeah. So if you just joined, uh, I do have a discord, two other TikToks, Instagram, YouTube, please consider checking those out. Also have a Patreon with it, some exclusive content. Uh, I really should make like a, a better pitch. I need to like write shit down. So I say the same thing over and over. Um, 
have exclusive contents uh, like podcast, uh, live Q and A's. That's where I post uh, all full clips of my debates and then um, as well as a personal blog. So yes. Oh, Josh is back. He went to go find uh, more help. I have many whore pages. I love that for me. You knew my backup, my personal TikTok is bad girl, Kenny. So I see nothing wrong with being a whore. Like you, it's funny you think that's like an insult. That a, a woman who has sex is a whore. <gasps> Blasphemy. I don't know if I can say that on TikTok. Maybe that's where you're typing it with an H. Or maybe you just can't spell. 